One thing you gotta learn about my job, no place is safe from wayward basketballs, and don't use the camera as a shield. KC at number three Midwest, first quarter. Midwest wearing the white. Ty Fenster's just inside the line, so that shot will go in for a long two, but the Oilers are on the board first. They were using some fast passes early on, and it was leading to points. Chad Rinker's gonna come in from the back door and surprise the defense. His team would jump out to a four-zip lead. KC was taking things at a little slower pace, but it was getting the job done. This is Bo Lund putting in the first two of his 12 points, and the Buckaroos are only down four to two. Now coming into this game, Midwest had already wrapped up the top seed in the 1A Northeast, but they wanted to win their home finale, especially against the arch rival. Adam Van Norman strikes for two of his 20, and the home team's up nine to four. The boys in blue did not have much to lose in this one either, except for bragging rights. Marcus Couch muscles his way in for a bucket. 10 points for him, and the visitors are only down 11 and nine. The Oilers, though, were looking to keep the pumps going in their gym. Fencer's at the top of the key, and he'll open the door for three. 23 points for the senior. His team now has a 19 to 12 advantage. Let's get a little defense and transition in here. Rinka will rip off somebody. Now it's just a foot race to the other end of the court. He'd win and get two points just ahead of the first quarter buzzer. Midwest was in decent shape, up 21 to 12 after the first eight minutes. Second quarter, some plays were just way too easy. And here's a great example. Someone forgot about Rinker and the paint was wide open. The home team would maintain their advantage up 23-15. Then KC got a little generous on this next highlight. A little too much on the inbounds pass. And here comes Van Norman who will cash in on the free gift. The lead is in the double digits with Midwest up 26 to 15. The opposition would then tighten up their defense some. Jordan Largent saw that play coming from a mile away. He's only a five foot 10 inch freshman. Give him a few years and he'll grow a few more inches. Meanwhile, on the other end, the Buckaroos were slowly chipping away at the deficit. Chase Gosney can't find anyone to pass the ball to, so he says, what the heck, I'll shoot it. Good idea. 14 points for the freshman. His team is down 26-21. The Oilers, though, were thinking long range. Van Norman wants to make a call, and he's got plenty of minutes left on his cell phone plan. That was the boost his team needed as they go back out 29 to 21. But then the visitors would get it in gear. You've heard of an eight second ride. Well, here comes an eight point ride. Matthew Tejal will light this ball up for three and can it. Buckaroos are down 31 to 26 at this point. Then off the inbounds, James Caro, his three will find nothing but net, and his team is right back in this game, down 31-29. Time is short, but if they hurry, they can get one more in. Lund is already way ahead of the pack. He'll score the lay-in ahead of the buzzer. KC goes on an eight-zip run in the last minute before the break, and this game is tied up at 31 points apiece going into the locker room. Okay, watch carefully. You might see yourselves. Keep watching. Make sure you're recording. Third quarter, the Oilers would regroup. Van Norman plants his feet, and the reward is so sweet. The three ball has his team back in the lead, 34 to 31. But then the Buckaroos were starting to use their speed, and it was starting to pay off. Lund is already wide open on the other end of the court. He'll cruise in for another two, and the visitors are only down 34-33. Later, the boys of blue were thinking about taking their first lead of the game, and it could not have come at a better time. Caro drains the three ball in the side pocket, and now his team has the advantage up 38-36. That did not sit too well with the home team, and they were determined to right the ship. Fenster's first try is rejected, but he gets the loose ball, bucket, and the whistle. The three-point play now has Midwest back on top, 39-38. Skipping ahead a little bit, the Buckaroos were starting to saddle up right around now. That was an ugly shot, but somehow Gosney got it to drop. That's all that matters. The score is tied at 42. The freshman was taking charge for a bit. Here's a better looking turnaround jumper. The visitors were on the move leading this contest 47 to 42. And the KCD was making a few plays as well. Teja says, no seconds for you. Put your tray in the pile with the other dirty dishes. The Buckaroos would hold that 47-42 advantage going into the final eight minutes. Fourth quarter, Midwest tries to come back. Van Norman intercepts the pass and he'll take it to the far side and put it away for another two. His team is within striking distance, down 49 to 44. But the Oilers had a little problem realizing where Teha was. Here comes another sophomore swat, but Casey has to work a little bit on their fast break finishes as the outlet pass could not be handled and they save two points for now. 
The home team, though, did not really need those two points, not when they can go for three instead. Fenster takes aim, lets her fly, and connects. This is the close one, Oilers trail 51 to 49. But the Buckaroos were trying to buck off the competition quickly. Tejas is gonna get his points the hard way, and I do mean the hard way, as he'll take a spill, but he got the points and one more. The boys in blue still have the advantage, 54 to 49. Midwest though was stepping up their defense in their own way. Fenster gets another swipe and he knows what to do with it. The two teams were trading baskets, but the opposition still held the lead, 54 to 51. We need to get someone new in here. How about Garrett Kremers? He came in off the bench just to sink that jumper and provide his team with a five point advantage. The big thing now is that time is starting to become a problem for the home team. Tony Butler will try to relieve some of the pressure with this three, but the Oilers were not able to do much after that. KC would stun their arch rivals with a big road win heading into the regional tournament, 63 to 57.